besides uh, cementing her place as an actor in Indian cinema, she is also known for devoting time in humanitarian causes she has supported over the years. Her contribution in the area of sanitization, education and women empowerment has not only been effective but has also inspired several others who has joined this cause. Thank you Vidya for joining us today. I would urge everyone to give a huge round of applause today for Ms. Vidya Balan. Moving on to our next speaker this evening, Maithili Rao, who is the author of the book. And Maithili has been freelance film critic writing on Indian cinema over the two decades. She's written her renowned and national international publications. Before drifting into the writing on cinema, she was a lecturer of English. From hobby to developing a passion for writings on film was a natural progression. She started out as a critique of foreign films for Sunday Observer and a columnist writing on the images of women in Hindi um, films for Eve magazine over the decades. This has led to a rewarding freelancing career for an Indian and international publication which includes writing for the Hindu, Frontline, NFDC Cinema in India and London-based South Asian Film Cinema. Uh, she believes that besides aesthetics, film must have been a relevance to the social and politically entirely. We are here to release her new book, The Millennium Women in Bollywood, a new brand published by Oxford University Press. This book, talks, this book talks about the emergence of new Bollywood brand, The Millennium Self-Assertive Women. It is discussed how and why Bollywood has found it worthwhile to explore the reality of millennial women who are thriving in India these days. A small part of democratic, but very influential and important. Now I will leave it to the experts to introduce the book. Without any further delay, I will hand it over to Maitri and Vidya. And with the formality, I will request everyone to kind of uh, release the book and then we'll take the conversation forward. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you everyone and we will start the event today. Mightily over to you. Hello. Thank you all. First of all, thank you Vidya Balan for you know so readily agreeing to release the book. I didn't expect it actually. <laughs> so see hi Methley, because this is the first time we're meeting. <laughs> but I had read uh, Maithili's name in publications over the years and I knew hers was a credible name. But most importantly she told me she was carrying my face on the cover. <laughs> Hi everyone, good evening. So I think that was, um, you know, that tempted me. And of course, in all genuineness, I've, I was very intrigued to read the book, but I said yes to you even before I did, because it I knew um, it was something that I would be interested in and a lot of other people. Thank you for that vote of confidence. Okay. And uh, thank you all for coming here. There are so many distractions on a weekend evening in Bombay. And thanks for coming. This is homecoming for me. I lived in Bombay till about five years ago. And uh, it feels like coming home, you know, to this warmth and this excitement of this city. But I'm pretty happy in my soul, which allowed me to write this book mm. <laughs> without much distraction. And uh, so... Uh, the title says it all. I'm not going to, I hope you'll buy the book and then see what the book is about. The title says, I was intrigued uh, by this. Uh, I used to spend a lot of time in the US during the summer vacations. 
because of my daughter and my grandchildren living there. And I saw so many articles exploring the millennial phenomena. I thought this has become just a buzzword, a fashion word. But then when they talked about the demographics, and then they have millennials are those who are born after 1985 and reaching adulthood in the new millennium. But then there are post-millennials, the, the Z generation, Z, yeah. yeah, Generation Z. And then I said, this is, this, there's a continuum in it. It doesn't happen in a vacuum. So I was interested in actually the evolution of the Indian woman in uh, the portrayal in popular cinema. So I was, so in my book, I go back and forth. I go back to Mother India. I go back to Dunya Namani for the rebel in uh, Indian cinema. And then there's also, we had the parallel cinema, which made an impact. So because that, I got so deeply involved when I was writing the book on Smita Patil. So then I found that the equivalent is happening in the new millennium in uh, Bollywood with the coming of the indie filmmakers. And they made such a huge difference to the way they gave agency to women, the way even in a rom-com, normally it's like, you know, the old rom-com world, uh, boy meets girl, boy chases girl, she resists, then she gives in little uh, obstruction from family. And that was the formula. There I found a really great change even in that formulaic film. And then we have, as uh, Iti said, Vidya portrays woman the hero. Actually, I, I have a chapter called woman the hero. Whereas, you know, and then it, con uh, it connects to the hero myth. And then it is like a mono myth that is applicable to all cultures. The, the quest, the impediments that come in the way, and uh, how she, or he, but now it applies to she, overcomes this. And I found it fascinating that there are so many films now in the recent past where you can have women the hero. And then there is also women at work. Because earlier you said, oh, kaam karti hai. But what? You never show her in the context of work. So we have, I found that there are so many films that are showing a woman as a, as work is very important to herself. So these were the things. And then of course, no means no. Pink and Anarkali of Ara that said that, you know, but it's no doesn't mean maybe mm. and it implied yes, but no means really no. And then the and another chapter that I really enjoyed writing was the subversives. That is, uh, you take a film like Dev Das mm. and Saheb Bibi or Gulam, and then you subvert the whole story. And the Paro and Chanda you see in Devda, in Dev D, is nothing like the old characters that you have. And when it comes to Sahib Bibi or gangster, she becomes a player from being a victim. So, you know, I enjoyed writing about those two films and also the, the women and the sisterhood. So there is one chapter devoted to that. And then... Uh, so as you write, it evolves certain things. They not, may not be strictly millennial, but I find the retro effect of the subversion coming in my concluding chapter, where I say, Tabu comes back in Haider, in Andhadun, and, and uh, Sri Devi came back in English to English. So could you ever imagine in the past that a middle-aged uh, homemaker find being the central character in a popular film? So that's what I feel that this reflects in a way the centrality of the modern Indian woman who is still more than Indian values, traditions, but trying for independence, you know, her own identity. This quest for identity and there's also a clash between tradition and modernity in that. So these are the ideas that are explored in the book. We'll uh, get to, I think, instead of a monologue, we'll have a dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it was very important that you laid out for everyone what all you really explored in the book. Yeah. You know, I've had a chance to read parts of it. Uh, Ajay ji. <laughs> mm. um, but uh, 
This has given us a sneak peek. Everyone a sneak peek. Yeah. So I didn't want to, uh, it's not full disclosure yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. So I have to keep the interest alive right. in the book so that you go and, uh, you know, find. And uh, one more thing, this is not a very academic book. It's a serious book, looks at cinema in a serious way, but there is no academic jargon that comes between you and the book. Mm. Okay. So yes. that, I think uh, that's why, you know, I feel that, okay, there are a couple of chapters where I set out the framework. What makes the, uh, the millionaire woman important? As I said, as I say, it's a very small demographic. And uh, when you see a vast country like us and our population and the differences, class, caste, education level, there's so many. But I find that in... Uh, in the media representations, in advertising, the woman becomes like both a brand and a brand ambassador. She is both the medium and the message. I I find that uh, that's a that's how I can sum sum that up. And there are so many aspects that are there. There are small town girls I've seen in Bangalore coming from small towns. They're all got exciting jobs in the IT sector or so. And they are living away from homes as, you know, sharing an apartment, which was something more like a, what used to happen in other countries in the West. But that's not done here. So there's so many careers opening out. And, uh, and then this is not just a sociological thing, but it's also culturally I found that now I've been living in